People often ask me why my last name only has one L, and I often reply to begin with, well, how many L's do you need? But the real reason is it's Welsh, and in Welsh, double L is actually a different letter of the alphabet. I say that because in Welsh we have lots of myths and legends, and one of them concerns a giant who is leading his army across the countryside, and they come across a chasm that is too, that is too wide for them to get across by throwing ladders over there. There's a river at the bottom that is too deep for them to wade through, and there are rocks in the river that are so close together they can't use their boats. And they discuss how they're going to get the army across to the other side, and eventually the giant decides there is no alternative but for him to lay his body down across the chasm and allow his soldiers to walk across his back to get to the other side. And as he is heard, as he lays his body down across the chasm, he is heard to say, one that would be a leader must be a bridge. And I think that's a very powerful metaphor for your role as leaders in education. School leaders are successful to the extent that they get other people to be more successful in their classrooms. And I think it's really important to understand what this means in practice. In the same way that no teacher can do the learning for her students, but what she can do is create a learning environment in which her students learn, no leader can do the learning for her teachers, but what she can do is create an environment in which all teachers to do, develop their practice. Now, of course, teachers can develop their practice in many ways. Some will benefit students and some will not. And one of the things I think we have to understand is that some things are far more powerful than others. And perhaps the hardest job of leaders in schools is to get teachers focusing on getting better at the things that have the biggest payoff for their students. And this is really difficult because what teachers do is generally very good. So people say, how can we improve schools? And they look for waste. And there isn't any waste in schools because almost everything the teachers do contributes to student learning. So the essence of effective leadership is actually stopping people doing good things to give them time to do even better things. And that's the hardest job, is to focus teachers on the work that makes the biggest difference to their students, not the latest big thing. We're always looking for the next big thing in education. We need to do the last big thing properly, and that is formative assessment. It turns out that formative assessment is the most powerful change that teachers can make in their classrooms. And of course, people can always say research shows this or research shows that. But the reason I think that formative assessment should be the enduring focus of teacher improvement is because formative assessment relies on a very simple set of questions. One, what did I just do as a teacher? Two, what did my students learn? And as long as teachers are reflecting on the relationship between what they just did and what their students learned, then they'll always be able to advance their practice. The challenge, of course, is that this means changing what teachers do in classrooms. In 30 years of doing professional development, I've learned it's much easier to change what teachers do when students are not present than is to change what teachers do when students are present. Changing teaching practice is very hard. It's not a process of knowledge acquisition, it's a process of habit change. And so your primary task as leaders, I think, is to create an environment where teachers accept the need to continuously develop their practice, hard though it is, and make small incremental changes for as long as they stay in the job. If we do that, there is no limit to what we can achieve.